Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 9.1 of the Mastering Multi-Threading series, we will be diving into some fundamental blocking techniques used in C-sharp programming. Whether you are a beginner or looking for a quick refresh, this video will help you understand the basics of slip, join and task.way. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the bell button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, Let's get started. Thread synchronization basic blocking techniques in C sharp. Basic blocking techniques in C sharp such as thread.slip, thread.join, and task.wait. These are methods for controlling the flow of execution in a program, especially in situations where we need to introduce delays or synchronize the execution of threads or tasks. So we will explore three key blocking techniques: slip, join, and task.wait. These techniques will help you control the flow of your program when working with asynchronous operation. Our first blocking technique is thread.sleep, which is used to introduce a pause or delay in your program. It's a simple way to temporarily halt the execution of a thread. So here is how we can use it in C sharp. We can write thread.sleep 3000. So basically, it is going to make the thread to sleep for 3 seconds. Is the 3000 milliseconds. Use case. Thread slip can be useful for animation, simulation, or controlling the rate of some of the processes. Next up, we have thread.join, which is used for synchronization between threads. It waits for a thread to finish its execution before allowing other threads to proceed. So here is how we can use it in C sharp. Let's say we have created one thread named thread1 and we are interested in making the main thread wait until thread1 finishes its execution. So in that situation, we can write thread1.join. Huge case of thread.join. Number one, waiting for worker threads to finish. We can use thread.join when we have a main thread that spawns worker threads to perform various tasks. The main thread can call join on each worker, ensuring that it won't proceed until all the worker threads have completed their tasks. Number two, thread pool synchronization. In scenarios where we use the .NET thread pool to execute tasks. We can use thread.join to wait for a specific task to complete. This is useful when we want to coordinate multiple background tasks and ensure that they are finished before moving on. Number three, waiting for a background task to finish. In a GUI application, we may use thread.join to wait for a background thread to finish before updating the user interface. This prevents race condition and ensures that UI updates occur only after the background work is done. Sequential execution of thread.join can be used to ensure that thread execute in a specific order. For example, if we have a sequence of tasks that need to be performed one after the other, we can use join to make sure each task finishes before starting the next one. Our final technique is task.wait, which is commonly used when working with asynchronous operations in sheet. It allows you to block the current thread until a task is completed. Here is how it can be used. We can write task.wait. It will block until the task is complete. Use case of task.wait is waiting for completion of a single task. The primary use of the task.wait is to wait for the completion of a single task. This is useful when we want to block the current thread until a specific asynchronous operation is finished. Number two, sequential execution of asynchronous operation. We can use task.wait to ensure that Synchronous operations are executed in a specific order. For example, if we have a sequence of asynchronous tasks must run sequentially, we can wait for each task to complete before starting the next one. Number three, asynchronous code in console application. In console application, we might use task.wait to ensure that asynchronous operations are completed before the application exits. This can be useful to prevent the program from terminating prematurely if async tasks are still running. Number four, legacy scenarios. In older code or scenarios where asynchronous programming patterns like async await are not available, task.wait can be used to synchronize with asynchronous operation. Now we have talked about some basic blocking technique in C sharp, right? So let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. So here we are in Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of the basic blocking techniques thread.sleep. So for that, what I have done, I have created one console application named basic blocking technique in C sharp. It has program.cs. The program.cs file, first I have included using directives to access the system namespace and system.threading namespace. That's what I have written using system, using system.threading. Then there is a class named program that has main method. 
which is an entry point of this application. Here, as a first statement, what I am doing, I am just printing this statement into console window. What I have written, demo of basic blocking techniques, red dot slip. Then, I am just printing this statement, a start of the program, and then I am printing before thread dot slip. Here, I am introducing a three second delay using thread dot slip. That's what I have written, thread dot slip 3000. And 3000 is a number that represents milliseconds. So 3000 millisecond equal to 3 seconds. So this statement is going to make program delay for 3 seconds. That's what this statement is doing. And that's how this statement of thread dot slip works. There is another version of this slip. Let me show you. We go and right click and go to the definition. Then it will take me to this thread class, which is nothing but the sealed class. right? And if you come here, you see there are two slip method variation. First, it is going to accept millisecond timeout. Second one is going to accept time as these two version of the slip method we can use as a basic blocking techniques. Okay. Now come to the program. Here, after making program to slip for three seconds, this statement is going to get executed. And finally, we are printing end of the program into console. That's what this program is doing. Right. Okay. So let me execute this program and show this output to you. Okay. Output has started executing. If you see this First statement got printed demo of basic blocking techniques thread dot sleep start of the program got printed before thread dot sleep got printed and we have noticed before thread dot sleep got printed after that program waiting for three seconds then only this statement got printed after thread dot sleep finally end of the program got printed into this console okay so that's how the thread dot sleep method works so that's the basic blocking techniques thread dot sleep now let's see the demo of the basic blocking techniques thread dot join for that again. We have one console application named basic blocking techniques in C-Sharp that has program.cs. In program.cs file, I have included these namespaces dot system using system.threading. Then there is a class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. Here, as a part of the first statement, I have written this statement, demo of basic blocking techniques thread.join that I am printing into the console. Then I'm printing this statement into console window, a start of the program. Then what I'm doing, I'm just creating two thread, thread one and thread two. That's what I have written. Thread thread one is equal to new thread worker one. Thread thread two is equal to new thread worker two. Basically thread one is pointing to the worker one method. Thread two is pointing to worker two thread method. Worker one and worker through methods, what they are doing? Let's see. So this worker one thread method, this statement it is printing. Worker one is starting. And then I have issued thread dot sleep statement, thread dot sleep 2000. Basically, this statement is making delay of two seconds. That is, I am representing that it is working some work. So basically, I am simulating some work over here with the help of this statement. Then what I am doing, I am just printing this statement into the console window. Console dot write worker one has finished. That's what this worker one method is doing. Similarly, worker two method also works. Worker two method is doing. It is printing this statement. Worker two is starting and then it is making thread to sleep for three thousand milliseconds. Basically, it's a delaying. 3 seconds and it is again it is simulating some work over here with the help of this. Then I am just printing this statement worker 2 has finished. Once 3 seconds completes then this statement is going to get executed. Worker 2 has finished. Then what I am doing I am just going to start both threads. That I have written thread one dot start method thread two dot start. Method. Then finally I am just going to use thread dot join that is going to wait for both thread to finish thread one dot join so basically this statement making main thread to wait until thread one completes its execution. similarly i have issued thread two dot join thread two join method making main thread to wait until thread two completes its execution. next statement i am printing both threads have finished so once thread one and thread two got completed then this statement is going to get executed finally I'm just printing in the program into the console. Window. That's what overall this program looks like. Let me execute this program and see this out. Okay, so if you see output has started coming console. Demo of basic blocking techniques thread dot join got printed. Start of the program got printed. And then worker one is starting. Then worker two is start. Worker one has finished. The two has finished. Both threads have finished. Got printed. And finally, the end of the statement, end of the program got printed. Thread dot join. If you see this, both threads have finished and end of the program. It got printed after worker one and worker two methods got complete. Worker one and worker two are getting executed with the help of thread one and thread two respect. Thread dot join made sure that worker one and worker two completes. Then only main thread are going to print this statement. Both threads have finished and end of. That's how thread dot join method works. So here we are going to see the demo of the basic blocking technique. Start dot wait. 
For that, what I have done, I have created one console application, basic blocking technique in C has program.cs file. Here in this program.cs file, first we need to add these two namespaces using system, using system.threading.task. System.threading task is needed because we are going to use task.wait method over here. So these methods are available into this namespace. We need to include this namespace. Then there is a class name program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. Here, I have marked this main method with the async modifier. So this main method becomes as an asynchronous method. In this method, what I am doing, I am just printing this statement into console window. Demo of basic locking techniques task dot wait. Then I am just printing this statement into console window start of the program. And what I am doing, I am just creating a new task named task by calling this sum async method. What sum async method is doing? This method simulates an asynchronous operation with a two second delay using await task.delay. That's why this statement I have written await task.delay to before that I just printed this statement console.write line async method started and once this delay is over then this statement is going to get printed console.write line async method completed right so this is the method some async method is doing then I am just writing task.wait method. Basically, this method is responsible to block the main thread until the task is complete. That's what this task.wait method is going to do. Our task is complete, then this statement is going to get printed into console. Let me execute this and see this out. Okay, so output has started coming. So here, first statement got printed demo of basic blocking techniques task.wait. Start of the program got printed, async method started, and then there is a delay of two seconds. Right. After that, this statement got printed. Async method. Finally, the end of the program statement got printed when this async method completed their execution. So that's how we are going to use task.wait method as a part of basic blocking techniques of thread synchronization. Okay, so now that brings me to end of my session. To sum up, in this video, we learned basic blocking techniques in C sharp like thread.sleep, thread.join, and task.wait as a part of thread synchronization technique. In my next video, I will be covering thread synchronization technique blocking mechanism in C sharp. So stay tuned. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.